In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the off the beaten path free things to do here in Berlin. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on the video. There are so many things to do and see here in Berlin, but if you wanna get off the beaten track, see some things other than Checkpoint Charlie and the Bundestag, things like that, this is the video for you. Best of all, these things that I'm gonna show you are free. So I hope you enjoy it. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. Imperium's building on the Spreewogen, designed by the architect Richter Musikowski, resembles a sculpture that is unfolded to the front and rear to form a partially covered forecourts in front of the two main entrances. With solar panels on the roof and a rainwater utilization system, the Futurium is a nearly zero energy building setting a leading example in sustainability. It is largely supported by the Federal Ministry for Education and Research. The focal question of the Futurium is how do we want to live? And the fundamental conviction of the Futurium is that all possible futures are the result of our decisions and our actions. With more than 5,000 square meters on three floors, the museum is divided into three main areas, exhibition, forum, and lab. The exhibition area presents various different options for the future in the thinking spaces dealing with humans, nature, and technology. The content and design of the exhibition are intended to inspire us to develop our own standpoint on contentious topics. The forum is intended to encourage communal dialogue in a meeting of science, politics, culture, and civil society. The lab is a place for trying things out, where visitors of all ages can play with future tech and work on our own inventions and creative workshops. As one of Berlin's most important train stations, situated on the city's historic central line, the Stadtbahn, Bahnhof Friedrichstrasse, played a unique role during Berlin's Cold War division. It was a crossing point utilized by travelers arriving from the west and departing from the east. Anyone eager and able to hop the border following the construction of the Berlin Wall. Although this particular crossing point possessed one novel characteristic, that it was located entirely deep in the eastern sector of the city. Unlike, say, Checkpoint Charlie, the U.S. military crossing at the border between the Western District of Kreuzberg and the Eastern District of Mitte. Instead of immediately arriving into the east of the city when crossing from the west, it was possible to disembark directly into the heart of the German Democratic Republic at Friedrichstrasse. Returning back to the west would prove harder than arriving in the east, courtesy of the paranoid approach of the GDR regime. Eager to put an end to the flood of refugees who had, up until 1961, made their way to the British, French, and American sectors of the city to permanently resettle. To embark on that eastward journey, it would be necessary to pass through a passport control checkpoint and face scrupulous customs officers before being allowed to continue. This former departure terminal for people leaving the east to head to West Berlin now serves as a museum and historically protected monument. The museum and the formal Schultheis Brewery on the grounds of the Kulturbrewerei in Prenzlauerberg shows the permanent exhibition Everyday Life in the GDR. Life in the German Democratic Republic was shaped by the rule of the Socialist Unity Party of Germany, the SED, which after the end of the Second World War established a dictatorship based on the Soviet model in East Germany. The permanent exhibition on display shows the gap between aspiration and reality in the GDR through numerous original objects, documents, film and sound recordings, as well as biographical reports. The exhibition is divided into four thematic areas. First, the focus is on the lack of democratic legitimation and the mechanisms of SED rule. In the second part of the exhibition, the aim of the exhibition is to draw attention to life in the collective the nucleus of the desired communist society. In the third section, visitors discover the stark contrast between the system's promises of a better life under socialism, attractive living space, and opportunities for consumption, and the actual supply situation. The fourth and final focus is the wish of many East Germans for more freedom in everyday life. 
For example, the wish to be able to travel to the West, which for most people remained unfulfilled. The Palais Populaire on the Boulevard Unter den Linden is a project by Deutsche Bank that is dedicated to contemporary art and offers a platform for all those who think in an interdisciplinary way about culture. The exhibitions, which vary several times a year, combine tradition and future and also aim to create openness for new positions in the global art scene. The bank offers a broad program that brings together the most diverse aspects of contemporary culture under one roof. This includes art, literature, music, sports, performance, and dance. The heart of the institution is the 750 square meter gallery area. Four exhibitions focusing on contemporary art are shown here every year. Special attention is paid to presentations from the Deutsche Bank collection in the series Artist of the Year. This series presents young, international talents in a solo show in Berlin. Now this is just a few of the great things to do here in Berlin that won't cost you a dime. If you've been to Berlin, let me know in the comments some of the free things that you did that you really enjoyed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so. And make sure you hit the bell icon so you'll get noticed when I post new videos. Guys, until next time, I'll see you later.